for our next presentation. We are joined by Respiratorius and Theo Yuan Dot. Welcome, Yuan, and uh, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. I will present uh, Respiratorius and our leading assets for, uh, to improve uh, treatment of aggressive lymphoma as well as COPD. Um, Respiratorius was founded in 1999 as a research pinout from Lund University. With the initial aim was to develop new effective drugs for treatment of respiratory diseases such as COPD and severe asthma. Uh, which then <coughs> was an area lacking uh, new effective drugs. And 20 years later, or more than 20 years later, the, uh, the fact is, is the same, that uh, COPD lacks uh, effective treatments. In 2012, uh, Respiratorius acquired the rights to the asset VL001. Uh, and since then, we have progressed the project through uh, initial clinical studies, phase 1 and 2A, as well as we have been granted orphan drug designation and have approved patents in, in, in the most important markets for the asset. And we are now preparing the asset for a phase 3 study. Within uh, uh, respiratory diseases, we have now the project RESP9000, uh, which is now being prepared for a phase one study. Uh, if we dig a little bit deeper into VL001, uh, which is for the treatment of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, which is the most common type of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And annually about 60,000 patients are di diagnosed with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And the overall survival, uh, in terms of five-year overall survival, is about 60 to 70 percent. Uh, 10 to 15 percent are primary refractory to the first-line therapy, which is an immunochemotherapy called RSHOP. And 40 percent of those who actually respond to the first-line treatment relapses within 18 months. Uh, you can see also that the uh, medication markets for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is increasing annually and, uh, no, and diffuse large B-cell lymphoma accounts for 30% of the total non-Hodgkin's lymphoma market. VL001 is a combination of valproate and prednisolone and in order to find a synergizer to, the t uh, to uh, immunochemotherapy we, a new um, cell, uh, cell line model was set up uh, and, and different synergizers was evaluated. HDAC inhibitors are known to have a, uh, uh, known as a synergizer to chemotherapy as it makes the DNA more vulnerable to chemotherapy. Uh, Valproet uh, is a broad, uh, broad HDAC inhibitor uh, and also has positive effect on gene expression as well as cell cycle arrest. Our uh, phase one data also show uh, that Valproet ha has an in uh, increases the expression of CD20, which is the target for rituximab, uh, which is R in the RSHOP chemotherapy. Uh, uh, Valproet has been used since the 60s to treat epilepsy uh, and then has a well-known safety profile which significantly reduces the de development risk. And we, uh, in the phase 1 to a study, we used the same drug as, uh, as for treating epileptics uh, and uh, that was a significant uh, improvement in time of, instead of developing our own drug. I also highlight prednisolone, which potentiates the effect of uh, valproate. And then in the, in the treatment plan, prednisolone is administrated simultaneously with valproate. Uh, and the treatment uh, and the um, pretreatment starts two days before entering into the chemotherapy. Um, <clears throat> the results from our initial clinical studies was very strong. Uh, and we, um, uh, the results are uh, having a significantly improved survival uh, and uh, without any significant side effects. Uh, we, as a comparison, uh, comparison we used uh, data from the Swedish Lymphoma Registry uh, for patient treated between year 2000 and 2015. 
And, and we're showing that we have a more than 10% increase in overall survival after two years. Another statistically an a statistical analysis of the same data set shows that we have an 80% uh, risk reduction of risk of mortality compared to, uh, to our shop alone. And this data uh, was uh, shown to EMA, which confirmed that respiratory may move uh, VL001 directly to a phase three study. Uh, and, and also, we need also uh, pharmacokinetic results uh, since we have been focused on developing a new uh, formulation of uh, VL001 or a new formulation of Valproet, which is the API in VL001. We also performed, a, based on results from the initial clinical studies, we also performed a health economic analysis showing that uh, we would be taking into account the 10% increase in overall survival from 70 to 80%. We have, a, uh, we have performed a willingness to pay analysis indicating that the, uh, the, uh, in the, uh, the willingness to pay uh, per treatment is about 80,000 US dollars. And running the calculus with, with the annually 60,000 new, uh, 60, new cases, the m total m uh, potential market value is estimated to 5 billion based on the willingness to pay. However, as I said, <coughs> we have um, uh, developed a new formulation uh, dedicated for the new use of Valproet. Uh, and the formulation is a combination of immediate and extended release uh, in the same capsule. Uh, and we just recently performed a um, uh, issue of shares to support and finance the uh, pharmacokinetic study of the new formulation, which will be a phase one study in healthy volunteers. And the data is required for entry into a phase three study. So far, a CRO has been selected who will be then be responsible for submission of protocols and documentation and regulatory approvals. The new formulation is important in terms of supporting uh, the attractive pricing and realize the, uh, realize the global market uh, value potential of the project. And this is uh, something that we have had consultation with price experts and the new uh, and the PK study may support uh, the, uh, such a market value. Uh, we have also performed an analysis of um, um, of competitors and what we can see in, in respect to adjuvant treatment to the uh, to our shop and we see that we have a overall survival and lack of significant side uh, side effects with VL001 which really stands out in the competition uh, there all have been some high deal activity <coughs> within the diffuse large B-cell lymphoma space. However, most of these assets are related to immuno-oncology uh, assets uh, where diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is only one of several oncology uh, indications. What we can uh, see as value-enhancing milestones during the next couple of years is uh, continuing uh, the, uh, the strive to making the project uh, ready for a phase three study. And uh, that is on the only sensible um, uh, strategy, as we can see, as any deal uh, or any agreement will include milestones from the continued clinical development and approval of the drug. And in order to, uh, to move the asset for, uh, through a phase three study, we need uh, an application to start the phase three study. And uh, then we need a confirmation from EMA or FDA on the study design, as well as we need to start the PK study, which we hope to do uh, during uh, the second half of this year. Uh, we have also high hopes on the patent approvals. Uh, we have a patent application which is not yet granted and we, we can also foresee that we will file new patents on the form formulation as it is more or less ready for, um, uh, for production or parts of the production has already been started. 
If we then jump to RESP 9000 project, uh, it is concerning a novel and innov innovative first-in-class anti-inflammatory and bronchodilator dilator for COPD and severe asthma. COPD is one of the most common and rapid, rapidly growing diseases and is characterized by inflamed and constricted airways and accounts for about 5% of the deaths worldwide and then is one of the leading causes of death globally. There is no existing drugs. The treatment is only to reduce risk of death. Uh, <clears throat> we now have a lead candidate which has been <clears throat> developed according to respiratory strategy focusing on small and human airways. And it is a new chemical entity with both anti-inflammatory and bronchodilatory properties, equivalent of those uh, the RESP 1000 project, which, uh, which is more or less the, uh, similar to 9000, although it is completely outside the previous patents uh, with, uh, from uh, the 1000 project. Uh, <clears throat> Our focus has always been, as I said, uh, to, to use human lung tissue in our, in our development. And we have been able to uh, have a, a set of lung tissue from about 100 individuals. And our compounds have shown significant and consistent bronchodilatory properties. For the new candidate drug, we have positive preclinical efficacy and pharmacokinetic data. Uh, in, and we have also in performed an in vivo study showing significant and consistent bronchodilatory properties. Um, <clears throat> during the last couple of months, uh, the progress, uh, project has uh, progressed uh, tremendously. Uh, we have initial safety studies, uh, which has been done according to non-GLP, uh, where we see that we have no significant deviations from uh, co at the concentration considered relevant. And those studies will be followed up according to GLP, both in vitro and in vivo. We have also performed a pilot study uh, in ex vivo study uh, uh, that is um, similar to those experiments that has been done before internally, but now we have performed an, uh, at an external uh, CRO. And uh, we see that the new candidate drug has expected uh, efficacy and similar to previous trials. The next step will be to expand the study with tissue from other species, uh, species and, and of course, most important, from humans. The, uh, the production process of the new uh, chemical entity or the lead candidate drug uh, is established and we are now moving into GMP production. We are also uh, setting up a collaboration uh, with a specialist in inhaled medicines uh, being responsible for the formulation of the new drug. The overall value enhancing milestones for the years to come uh, in order to uh, take the asset into a phase one study is of course the application to start the phase one study and in order to file the application we need to uh, First of all, we need to initiate and conclude the, uh, the toxicology study and we also need to compile the regulatory documentation of the new substance, which I reported on previously, which is, uh, is advancing. Uh, and we need also to conclude and finalize the GMP production for the clinical studies. And we also need to have an optimal formulation of the new in inhaled drug and uh, production of the, the substance. Uh, we also, we have a preliminary examination of our patent application, uh, which is a new chemical entity. And that has been now being forwarded to the, the different countries where we have applied for a, uh, a patent. Uh, and also for the financial part of it, we, ha we will have a cash infusion from exercise or warrants, which is in the range of 19 to 25 millions pre-cost and will be on our account in quarter three, 2021. And uh, that concludes the, uh, my presentation of uh, Respiratorius. Thank you so much, Johan. Let's uh, move on to some questions then. Sure. 
Uh, the biggest question for the year, I guess, is whether or not you will find a partner for VL001. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you had any interest? Can you tell us anything about the interest? Yes, uh, we have interest and we have a data room and we have activity in the data room. Uh, but as I presented the value of VL001, uh, uh, we see a great potential in the project. So it is not just agree an agreement. Uh, it is also to have an agreement that we foresee is similar to the value we actually, actually see of the project. So yes, we have had interest and we also have turned down a couple of offers. And then moving on to looking more at the patent situation, what does that look like for your two main projects? Uh, I would say it looks very good. Uh, first of all, we have an, uh, a patent granted in the most important market uh, for VL001 for the overall concept. And then we also decided, although we have both the patent and we have also the orphan drug designation, we decided to also to file a patent in the early stage where we uh, on the new, uh, on the formulation of the VL001. And that was done actually before we entered into the development. And since then we have progressed in the development, we have learned a lot and we have a new concept of the formulation. So, Yes, uh, we have hopes on the original application will be granted, but we can also foresee that we will follow up with, uh, with um, uh, new patent application as well. And for the REST 9000, we have a positive examination and we have now forwarded to the different countries. So we have hopes for a, uh, the first granted patent in that family. Um, I cannot say when uh, because I don't know, but uh, still it looks very good, I would say. So if we then turn more to the financial side, like you mentioned here, you have warrants. Yeah, we have warrants and we just recently uh, finalized a uh, issue of shares uh, and that issue of shares is uh, those, um, uh, those assets are directly uh, to directed to the PK study and finalize, uh, finances the PK study and production of the uh, VL001 for the PK study. And the next, uh, the warrants that will be exercised uh, mid this year uh, will be directed to uh, both the uh, toxicology study and concluding the preclinical research of the uh, RESP uh, 9000. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of interesting things coming up. Then. We have a lot uh, on our plate, yes, and we have made great progress during the last couple of months and uh, much accounting to that we have an organization now in place also. Hmm. Well, we look forward to following you during the rest of the year and thank you for coming. Thank you very much.